Tonight on the MTN News, found. Went to a local police department in that area. She identified herself as Alicia Navarro. A story making national headlines as an Arizona teenager gone missing four years ago mysteriously shows up in a small Montana town. And a lawsuit following a new Montana law is gaining steam but drawing conflicts over local control. Helena Pride coming up. Um, I really hope that uh, I know that right now a few members of that community are trying to get an injunction to pass and I looked it up and I didn't I don't think it's passed yet an injunction meaning that they can still go forward with their events. We take a look at the impacts unfolding as pride celebrations kick off in Montana and fighting elderly fraud one bingo game at a time. We've got one of the older populations in the country Montana does and that's where the wealth is concentrated. They have retirement accounts, they have savings accounts, they have money. We'll tell you how Montana's elderly are keeping one move ahead of scammers. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. We start with some good news in the search for a missing Billings woman who disappeared 10 days ago in South Dakota. Tonight, we've learned that she has been found safe. 34-year-old Jeannie Schweigert had been missing since July 17th. A rancher found her on his property lying next to a stock tank, dehydrated and sunburned, according to her family. She'd apparently gone for a walk and gotten disoriented. Her father says she has little memory of what happened over the last 10 days, other than knowing she needed to find water. And new details tonight surrounding a bizarre missing Arizona teen case that's culminated right here in Montana. Officials say 18-year-old Alicia Navarro, who was reported missing by her family in 2019, has been found safe. Navarro was discovered in Haver after she stopped by the local police department alone. As our Ashley Holden from our affiliate in Arizona reports tonight, the family says they never stopped looking. My daughter, Alicia Navarro, was missing since September 15, 2019. She has been found safe. Appearing emotional in a video posted to social media, Jessica Nunez calls it a miracle that her daughter Alicia Navarro has been found. I don't have details, but the important thing is that she is alive. Glendale Police saying Wednesday, the teen, now 18 years old, was found about 40 miles away from the Canadian border in a small Montana town. We can tell you that she went to a local police department in that area. She identified herself as Alicia Navarro. Jessica tirelessly searched for her daughter since she disappeared in 2019, hanging flyers telling ABC 15 Alicia has autism and relied on medication and her family. She doesn't know how to be here by herself. Does that make sense? She doesn't know how to take a bus. Police say they do believe this started as a runaway situation, but it's still a mystery where the Glendale teen has been since 2019 and how she ended up thousands of miles away. And as much as we'd like to, to say this is the end, we know this is probably only the beginning. Glendale police sending us clips from interviews officers were able to do virtually with Alicia before seeing the teen face to face. Did anybody hurt you in any way? No, no one hurt me. Okay, because, uh, you know, our goal is we just want to make sure that you're safe. The teen's mom saying she found out just hours before Wednesday's announcement. Police telling us the two were able to be reunited virtually. But I can say for everybody involved, including the detectives, um, it's extremely overwhelming. Police say Alicia knew her disappearance gained a lot of attention. After all these years, I asked police if Alicia gave any indication of why she decided to identify herself now. Um, she's expressed a desire to move forward in life and do the things that a normal, healthy adult would do. Glendale police tell us they now have detectives in Montana as they continue their investigation. It's no secret that Montana is a big state with an aging population and billions of dollars are lost each year nationally, giving us a better understanding of the true cost of elder fraud. It's why there's a massive push to arm our senior citizens with information about scams. Tonight, Q2's Andrea Lutz takes you to a Billings retirement community where a simple game of bingo might just be the difference. Okay. You got a bingo? Here at Aspen View Retirement Community. Okay. Keeps them engaged. Bingo is still there key. You go. And they love it. I, I want a new card. 
but as boards fill up... If you think you've been scammed, you should... And we get the message out there. Awareness is building. Okay, next question. Tasked with questions identifying different scams on their board... They tend to be victims of these fraudsters. Montana's Commissioner of Securities and Insurance even showed up. We've noticed that the majority of these cases are perpetrated against seniors. Each year, thousands of Montana seniors are exploited, leaving them empty-handed from scammers already on to their next victims. You know, we've got one of the older populations in the country, Montana does, and that's where the wealth is concentrated. They have retirement accounts, they have savings accounts, they have money. Looks like you're getting pretty close there. Much like a game of bingo, scammers are getting more sophisticated with their moves, now using artificial intelligence to fraud seniors with the voice cloning grandparent scam. Now they're taking um, recordings of the grandkids' voices from their TikTok or Instagram or YouTube accounts and based on those little samples of their voice, they can use artificial intelligence to sound exactly like that grandkid. Taking people like Nelcha McNulty by surprise. They really do target people here. They're not quite as sharp as they used to be, and they trust people. But with every box at bingo, players check off, stamina against scammers is built. The best outcome you can have is to prevent it in the first place. And so please, if you hear about a scam, call our office. In Billing. Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Let's start off with a live look over to Mile City with the Stockman Bank weather cam. You see a little bit of the rain here, especially if you look closer to the light, but the wind's been blowing things around, and we've seen some lightning around as well, where the temperatures have been steadily dropping now. But check out the wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Here's a time lapse. This was from Forsyth from earlier in the evening. See quite a bit of thunder and lightning, and uh, off to the side here, you see the tree. Well, you can kind of see where the trees have been moving around. Some of the top wind gusts there. We're hitting over 40 miles per hour. Here's Doppler radar up to the minute. You can see it moving off into the eastern plains for Billings. We also picked up at least some light precipitation and some gusty winds. Are there more storms on the way? We'll let you know in a few minutes. As Montana's first in the nation law to ban drag performances in public places continues to face court challenges, some city leaders here in Billings say the state's newest law limiting and in some cases banning pride events is jurisdictional overreach. Tonight, our Kelsey Marison takes a look at how Billings is impacted. Pride Month may be over, but it's still celebrated every day here at 406 Pride. But the recently passed HB 359 has created some obstacles for the LGBTQ Resource Center. We say gay! A time for celebration. It was absolutely bigger than expected. And expression. This year we had over 100 and 10 or close to 120 vendors, I think. Billings Pride is a week-long annual event at the end of June, but this year looked a little different. <laughs> Following the passage of House Bill 359 that restricts drag performances in front of minors in public spaces or state-funded locations. It's showing that the legislators are not really representing their people of Montana. They're just representing their own agendas or uh, like out-of-state agendas kind of thing. Which causes worry for the start of Helena's Pride Week this Sunday. A number of organizations and individuals filed suit in early June, challenging HB 359. On Wednesday, U.S. District Judge Brian Morris heard testimonies as he considered whether to issue a temporary restraining order to block enforcement of the law, a law that some Billing City officials aren't fond of. The state legislature has over and over and over again decided what was right or wrong on a moral basis. Danny Chiriki served Ward 3 in Billings as a city council member and says the city should be able to make its own decisions. It is all about no separation between church and state. Montana is a home rule state, which means that local governments are supposed to be able to do what they want, um, but the state legislature has a long history of going against that. It's not a problem specific to Montana. I believe that the one that we got was a, pretty much a carbon copy from the one that came from Texas. It's a trend. There's always going to be a very vocal minority and Unfortunately, like it is often from out of state. For now, Kat Elin of 406 Pride says there's a strong sense of community here in Montana that makes daily life a little easier. It's important to keep connecting to each other and to allies in the community because that's how we survive. When legislators aren't listening, we need to collectively find our power together and move it forward that way. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. It was on this date 89 years ago that the city of Billings held a dedication for Pioneer Park. Last year, the park was put on the National Register of Historic Places. 
Q2's David J talked with a Billings historian who says a big reason for that designation is that the park has retained much of its early characteristics. Pioneer Park was named in 1918 to honor the pioneers in eastern Montana. A little after that, the park was dedicated on July 27, 1932. And while there's very little of an account of that day and no pictures, you can still see a lot of the history throughout the park. Being on the National Register means that the National Park Service sees the historic integrity and the historic value that Pioneer Park has. From the beginning, it's been one of the main focal points of the city. Lauren Hunley is a community historian at the Western Heritage Center. She says at the dedication in 1932, the mayor made a speech and Judge Goddard, an original Billings resident, spoke on behalf of the pioneers. Nobody could decide on exactly which pioneer they were going to honor and name the park after. So the compromise was to just simply call it Pioneer Park. Hunley says the city purchased about 40 acres of what was ranch land for a dairy farmer with the idea that homes would eventually surround the park. We have an aerial photograph from 1926 and it is the park and there are like three trees. You have a smattering of houses just to the east of it and then there's nothing. All farmland. Dorothy Gray drew up the plans for the park and the playground horseshoe pits, and tennis courts all remain. Tennis was really popular, and there were not a lot of places around the state that you could play tennis. She also planned an amphitheater that was never built, but her idea for entertainment has been used. The city continues to use the natural geography, the natural layout of the landscape of the park. And so Symphony in the Park, um, Shakespeare in the Park, that is still happening in the original location that Dorothy Gray intended it to be. Hunley says she enjoys looking at what Gray envisioned for Pioneer Park. I love Dorothy Gray. A Western Heritage Center walking tour through Pioneer Park is scheduled for August 18th. I think that she'd be very pleased with the care and the use that the park has seen. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Coming up a little later in sports, Laurel and the Billings Blue Jays try to stay alive in the Class A Legion Baseball Tournament. And learning from the pros, some former NFL players giving girls in Lockwood some expert advice as they prepare to take the football field. But next, we head to Reed Point for a visit to a store where everything is free.